what steals your joy? Your day is going great. And then out of nowhere, it happens. Your brand new shoes get splashed with mud. Or maybe you're excited for a sleepover at your friend's house, but you get sick. Could be mom reminds you that you've got a dentist appointment, which is never fun. Maybe it's simply that your friend gets picked for the choir solo instead of you, or there's something new on your dinner plate. In moments, you go from feeling on top of the world to down in the dumps. Emotions can be just like a roller coaster. Life happens, and before you know it, you're up, you're down, you're upside down. We live in a broken world, and sometimes things will be hard and sad. But God designed us for joy. Even when difficult things happen, we can choose to celebrate what God has done, what God is doing. A friend's smile, bright sunshine, a cold glass of water on a hot day. <laughs> Keep looking for places where God is at work. Then you can say, come sunshine or rain, when things don't go my way, still, my joy can stay. When you choose to see and celebrate what God is doing, others can see God at work in you. That's why joy is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. I've got joy down in my soul. I'm going to let this feeling take control. Joy down in my soul to stay. And nothing's going to take it away. Joy down in my soul. I'm going to let this feeling take control. Whatever comes my way, I'll be okay. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about joy while we take a look at the story of some guys who got the biggest surprise of all time. Hey, I'm Zeke. Oh, and I'm Carter. And we're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. Carter, 
Carter! Carter! What are you doing? Organizing. Almost done. Well, I don't see the joy in that, or that you're gonna be done anytime soon. Hey, what's with the hat? Oh, I like to plan ahead for Christmas by celebrating in July, which is scientifically proven to help Christmas get here faster. Something that organizing does not do. Well, believe it or not, I actually enjoy sorting stuff. <laughs> For real? Yeah, it's very relaxing. You wanna help? Well, I'm always down to help a friend, but uh, can we make this a bit more fun? <laughs> sure. Oh, we need music. Um, ah, I forgot my phone. Can I see your playlists? Um, I think I accidentally organized my phone in one of these boxes. Ah, well, then we make our own music. Okay. Oh, uh, please don't tell me that you're going to sing. Remember karaoke? Ah, karaoke. But no, I have an even better idea. You ready? Let's make it! All right, what do we need? You got everything you need right here. Right here? Uh, uh, no, right here. We'll need latex gloves, pair of scissors, some tape, and a bunch of straws. So we don't eat the bottles. All right, let's make some music. First up, clarinets and flutes. Grab a straw and flatten one end of it. Okay. And you can even do this with your teeth. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Then, cut the sides like a V so you have pointed ends with your scissors. Uh, this might be a good time to ask a grown-up for help. Totally. All, All right. right. After you make the points, bite down again to compress them. And that will help make the sound. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> this is so annoying. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Is that jingle bells? What else? <laughs> and if you want to change the pitch, cut the straw shorter. <laughs> nice! Yeah. The shorter the straw, the higher the yeah. note. And if you cut it too short. <laughs> just add another straw at the end. And you can do that by cutting about halfway down the straw. Like so. Then curling up so it's a little bit smaller and stick it in to the other end. <laughs> Might take some trial and error. Oh. Hey, you got it working. Oh, okay, 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 now, what about these? Oh, right, almost forgot. Nothing says Christmas like bagpipes. Really? Yeah! Alrighty then. Step one, put on one of the gloves. Okay. Then take the other glove and put it on over the first. Yeah. You got it? I got it. All right. Then carefully peel them off together so they basically become one inside out glove. This part is tricky. Yeah. Make sure all the fingers are flipped inside out. Now, step two, pretend the glove is a balloon and blow it up a little. <sighs> Moving right along to step three, tie the wrist part of the glove in a nice tight knot. <sighs> there. You got yours? Got mine. Perfect. Then, you need to cut the tip of the thumb off. All right. Thumb. Tip cut off. Now you need two of these long flutes with pointed ends. I love a good callback. Step four, put the pointed end into the thumb hole and tape it into place. And there. What's next? Okay, bagpipe magic. Here we go. Put pressure on the pinky straw or chanter to start and then blow into the thumb straw or blowpipe. Then release the chanter and let the music play! <laughs> Look at that! Phew. 
That's so yeah. cool. As long as the bag is full of air, the bagpipe won't stop droning. Wow, so that's how they hold those notes in for so long. Yep. These bagpipes could basically make this strange but joyful noise forever. Speaking of joy, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But God's people kept turning away. At last, they were attacked by foreign nations. Even in this dark time, God spoke through prophets and promised to send a rescuer. After hundreds of years, God sent an angel to an ordinary girl named Mary. He told her she would give birth to a baby, God's very own son, Jesus. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everyone. Before Mary had her baby, Mary and Joseph had to make a road trip to Bethlehem so they could be counted by the Romans. But Bethlehem was so crowded, they couldn't find a room anywhere, except a place where the animals stayed. So God's very own son, Jesus, king of the entire universe, was born where cows and sheep were kept and placed in a feeding trough to sleep. It was the most incredible news ever. And no one knew about it yet. But just outside of town, a group of shepherds were taking care of their sheep. Now, of all the jobs somebody could have, shepherds were pretty low on the list. I mean, they spent nearly all their time out on the fields with a bunch of dirty sheep. Now, we don't know much about the group of shepherds outside Bethlehem, but we could imagine one of them was a young shepherd out there with his grandpa. It's so cold and boring. Does anything ever happen out here? <laughs> It takes a lot of love and skill to keep these woolly ragamuffins safe. I guess. In time, you'll come to know them each by name. What we do here is real important. Sure doesn't feel like it. In God's eyes, every single person is of great value. And for these shepherds, on this incredible night, everything was about to change. Suddenly, brilliant light split the dark night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Ooh, what's happening? <sighs> the shepherds were understandably terrified. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. How can this be? Why is he telling us? Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a group of angels appeared around the first one. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven. And may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. And just like that, the angels disappeared. The shepherds stared in awe at the dark sky. Glory be! Can we go to Bethlehem? Right now? <laughs> you bet your sheep's wool! Let's see this thing that's happened. Lickety split! Those shepherds hurried off to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger, just as the angel had said. He's just like a, a baby lamb. Uh, what a time to be alive. After the shepherds had seen Jesus, they hurried out into the streets of Bethlehem. Hey, everyone! God sent a savior! Praise be to God! God had chosen a handful of lowly shepherds to carry the most important message ever. And the shepherds were so filled with joy that they shared the good news about Jesus with everyone they met. The end. Wow! Can you imagine sitting around the campfire, shooting the breeze, and then bam, full on angel choir. <laughs> yeah, I always wondered what the music really sounded like. So what's our part in the story? Well, you may not be visited by an angel choir, but like the shepherds, you can find joy in your ordinary everyday life. Jesus brought joy to the world and Jesus still brings joy to the world. 
So you can have joy at school when you have to stand up in front of class. Or at soccer practice when you have to run laps. You can even have joy at the dentist. Or when you're waiting in a line that takes forever. That's absolutely right. No matter how average or even frustrating your day is, you can always choose to focus on the joyful news the shepherds shared. That God sent Jesus. Exactly. Jesus came to live with us and show us how to love God and love others in any situation. And when you just remember that, every moment is an opportunity to share God's love and spread a little joy. When you're waiting in line, you can smile at someone. When your little brother's being super annoying, you can be patient and show him a little joy. Those are great ideas. For joy to the world. Joy to the world, you got it. It's not too early for Christmas songs, is it? See you next time. So, here's the thing. Jesus brings joy to the world. Speaking of joy, shall we jam? That would bring me great joy. <laughs> <laughs> We should go on tour. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's title it Ode to Chaos. Yes. Like this, like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll set the beat. I'll set the beat. <laughs> <laughs>